Can anybody explain that ending to me? Because honestly, I think I have my theories, but holy Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Snyder, and today is Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. If you're new around here on Wednesdays, it's all about that backlog, catching up on things that I haven't quite gotten to yet. In my quest of watching all the good films that came out last year, I recently watched First Reformed, which is on the list of top 10 movies from a lot of film reviewers, but it also got an Oscar nomination for Best Screenplay this year, and boy oh boy, let me tell you why this movie is, is not only good, but who it got, it got to me. I have decided to keep a journal to set down all my thoughts and the simple events of my day. I will keep this diary for one year, and at the end of that time, it will be destroyed. First Reformed is an American drama directed by Paul Schrader that deals with a case of extremes in the modern day church and how it affects moral decisions and faith. Ethan Hawke plays Reverend Toller of the First Reformed Church, a church that is about to celebrate its 250th anniversary. While this film does follow the events of setting up this anniversary service with the help of a nearby megachurch led by Cedric the Entertainer, First Reformed is much more of a character study than anything else. Without giving too much away, because I did go into this film with no prior knowledge, even less knowledge than I just gave you, we do find out at the very beginning of this film that the Reverend is dealing with the death of his son, who was killed in a war recently. He's also an alcoholic, which doesn't play too much of a big part in the film until later on, but it's this meeting that he has with a man named Michael that ends up being a big indicator this film isn't quite about the church as much as it is with dealing with these big moral and philosophical questions. Essentially, Michael and his wife Mary are five months into a pregnancy when Michael has decided that he wants Mary to have an abortion. His reasoning is the state of the world is the environment is not being taken care of. We, we also find out really quickly that he is a radical environmentalist. Michael wants to help the earth as much as possible, but in doing so, he also condemns the people that are harming the planet in the first place. Michael brings up these concerns to Reverend Toller, which makes him ask the very same moral questions that Michael is asking, and it's these questions that bring the Reverend down a very dark path. I will say just briefly that this scene between Michael and the Reverend is my favorite scene in the entire movie. It, it makes you think about these same moral questions. It gives you that kind of same uneasiness as the Reverend does. But these are such big questions that we do need to ask ourselves. And that's one of the reasons I like this film as much as I do. But to say anything more about the plot would spoil the movie. I will say they do things throughout this film that I was not prepared for in the slightest. There's these intense moments with quite shocking things that make you just kind of ask, where is this story going and what is the ending going to be like? And when you get to the end, it's, it's just as confusing as it is throughout the rest of the film. It's ambiguous. It makes you wonder what on earth just happened. It's very similar to the ending of Birdman for anybody that's seen that. And, and honestly, I'm not quite sure exactly what happened. I do have my theories, of course, but I think that it was very much open to interpretation and I, I really enjoyed it. With that being said, as far as the confusing and ambiguous moments of the film, there are a few moments in the direction where I kind of question the director's motives. It's clear that this movie has environmental views. They want to, you know, save the earth, which is great. But there's this one particular scene that kind of just beats you across the head with these views. And it was a dope scene. And I really liked what they did there, but it just felt out of place throughout the entire film. And that's what was so confusing to me because this is a film that really gives you all different sides of this spectrum of these moral questions in life. And that's what's so dope about it. That's one of the things that I really, really appreciated about it. But then to have this one scene later on in the film, that's kind of like, here's our views. Here's what needs to happen. It felt really out of place. Meanwhile, the, the filmmaking aspects of it was really cool. I liked what they did. It was just a very conflicting part of the film. I wish I could say more without spoiling it. But anyways, other than that, technically speaking, this film is brilliant. I've already used that word once, but I'm gonna use it again. 
Ethan Hawke has a fantastic performance that makes me like actually relate to the character while also thinking, come on, man, you probably, you probably shouldn't do that. I really love the cinematography in this film. I really love the shot composition all the way throughout. There's just these shots that make you think, wow, I haven't actually seen that in a film anytime recently. And, and, and that paired with the camera work, it's just really satisfying to watch. Oh, I also probably should have mentioned this earlier, but this entire film was shot in 4x3 instead of the standard 16x9. The director said that he did this intentionally because he wanted you to get more of the human body in each frame. And in my opinion, this worked really well. What this does is it allows you to keep your focus on the characters. The sets are all very simple. There's not many of them, but when there are, there's nothing distracting in the background. There's not much of a soundtrack, and when there is, it's very intentional. Albeit, I'm still, again, I'm not quite sure how I feel about the soundtrack when it is used. There's not many characters in general. There's your core few characters. Again, that's why I do believe so strongly that this is more of a character study than it has anything to do with the actual plot of the church and its 250th anniversary. All of these things made this a very creative film while also being held in reality. At the end of the day, this is definitely one of my favorite films to come out last year. I wished I had seen it earlier. It's on Amazon Prime, so you can go check it out yourself if you haven't seen it yet. But I highly recommend it, and I hope to be getting the Blu-ray very soon. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. This episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by my Discord. If you've been enjoying any of my episodes of Your Everyday Nerd or anything else on the channel of Zack Snyder Productions, then I want to invite you to the Zack Snyder Productions Discord. Over the past year and a half, I've really been able to get close to a lot of the members in the community through Discord. Without Discord, I wouldn't be able to be as close with the community as I have been. So I want to get more people that are watching the videos here over there so we can talk about anything and everything that you guys want to talk about. We talk about movies and games, TV shows, anime, pretty much anything. Oftentimes we'll get into voice chat and just talk while we're playing games. It's pretty fun. And occasionally I do a movie night, which I want to bring back in 2019, where on Friday nights we watch a movie together using a program called Rabbit or Parsec. And it's pretty fun. I like it. A lot of people there like it. Uh, you don't even have to watch the videos to be in the Discord. So bring your friends. It's just there to have a good time. And hopefully you guys will uh, be able to meet new people within the community that way. So check out the link in the description box below to join the Discord, and I hope to see you there soon. And that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go hit that like button. For whatever reason you did like the video, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know what you thought about First Reform down in the comments below if you've seen it. If not, let me know what other 2018 films I should cover in the near future. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.